The Demon's Souls remake for PlayStation 5 is right around the corner, so let's talk about what's new with this beloved classic that kicked off the Souls-like genre. We've gathered up a bunch of news, and just from the gameplay videos officially released, there is a lot to dive into that's different. We've got five significant things, a little more than that, so let's just dive in and get started with the first one. There are a lot of new PS5 exclusive features with the game. It's going to incorporate the PlayStation 5 controller's new haptic feedback, the DualSense stuff. That's all we know, we haven't gotten our hands on the game yet, we can't really speak to it, but it is going to have those features. GameSpot had an interview with Gavin Moore, creative director at SIE and basically the guy overseeing the project, he said this about the haptic feedback. So now, when you make that perfect parry, you know instantly through the controller, for instance, and then can do the riposte attack and then get out of there. It gives you those fraction of a second extra timing and really makes you feel like you're part of the combat. So maybe it is a significant addition or maybe this is all just marketing, maybe it's more of like a gimmick type thing. We don't know until we actually sit there with the game in our hands. Also, it's worth noting, of course, load times are going to be way faster. In the original, it could take like minutes for the game to load. Apparently, this one is going to take seconds, just judging by what we've seen from next-gen load times already. It is important to note that they didn't change other things, like they didn't speed up elevators just to quicken the pace or anything, for example. In fact, they actually seem to have extended load times a little bit after you die, so you're not instantaneously back in the game. They actually force it to wait an extra second or two just to give the player a breather and a chance to chill out a bit before getting back in the game. That's like a typical Dark Souls thing, you know? Uh, they also have added a new fractured mode, according to GameSpot, which is basically like a mirror mode. Having everything flipped sounds like a small thing, but believe us, that can be really disorienting. If you've tried it in any game, it can make things difficult, let alone a game like Demon's Souls. Uh, there are also nearly 180 game help videos incorporated into the PlayStation 5's new activities tab, like the card system. It's basically just like a more convenient YouTube guide on demand by pressing the the PlayStation home button and navigating to it. It does make sense for a game like Demon's Souls to show off this feature, but we, we're curious to see how much it can help you cheese the game a little bit. Thankfully though, a lot of it will still probably come down to raw skill. Now, there is of course two different graphics modes we know. There's cinematic mode, which locks the game to native 4K with 30 FPS, or performance mode, which has dynamic 4K at 60 frames per second. There are some filters, including one that makes the game look closer to the washed out look of the original, and to go along with that, there's also a photo mode, which actually will let you kind of pause the game technically. Activated photo mode will pause the game mid-action, but if you get invaded, then you're immediately kicked out so you can still get killed if you're not careful. And this probably goes without saying, but the game does, I mean, look at it. It looks significantly better. The level of detail in the environment compared to the original is kind of insane. Diehard fans of the original who like how bleak the original game was may not like it as much, but we still haven't seen enough to definitively say the more lush graphics affect the tone the game is trying to go for or not. Thankfully, they have taken a lot of fan feedback for character design, so we think there's a good balance here. Now, next at number four, there are quality of life changes. They've updated the controls somewhat to feel more modern, so presumably combat should feel a lot less stiff than it did in the original Demon's Souls. Another major change is that they've incorporated eight-way rolling rather than the four-way rolling of the original. So basically, that means that when you roll, you're not locked into the four cardinal directions. You can roll diagonally too. So if you didn't play these types of games, that might sound minor, but it is really a significant change that in some ways might make the game a little easier or just a little bit more user-friendly. They've also updated the camera. The original camera could be somewhat hard to deal with, so they've made it a little less cumbersome here. It's not going to clip through walls at weird angles and get stuck in the scenery for example. What is nice though and pretty cool apparently that if you really want the original camera back, you can. One of the options allows you to switch to the original camera settings. And probably one of the biggest changes is that they're incorporating character switching. It's not exactly the ability to respect your character, but it's similar. Gavin Moore said in this interview with GameSpot, what we have done is we've updated the character creator and we've given thousands upon thousands of new permutations where you can create and you can play. And then once you've chosen a character, what you can do is after you've paid a number of souls for it in the Nexus, you can actually store your character and then go in and change your character in the Nexus. It's a little unclear what exactly this means, but it sounds like they've made it so you can switch between your pre-made characters in the Nexus, basically the hub. So that means you can potentially try out different classes and builds in the same game. 
but they also imply that this feature is somewhat hidden. They've also made the grind for certain things a little less of a pain. They've improved drop rates of certain items. They haven't said what exactly, but Demon Souls players probably remember the crazy amount of different stones you have to collect to upgrade your equipment and how hard to get some of them were. So hopefully that's what they mean and not like making it so healing items drop constantly or anything. Now down to number three, we're talking about a lot of things that are changing, but some things are the same in significant ways. Demon's Souls is such a unique and strange game sometimes that it got a lot of players wondering if the new remake will actually keep some of the weirder stuff from the original, and apparently it will. They've been pretty forthcoming. Like the world tendency system, you know, the arcane system that can affect the difficulty of the different areas, that's completely unchanged. Though they've made it a little easier to know what your world tendency actually is, according to Polygon. Now the old monk fight, which is one of the most unique fights in gaming, is apparently unchanged. How it works is that an online player can control the monk, basically making it a sort of PvP boss fight. It's weird and fun and completely the same in this remake. Uh, one thing that is kind of disappointing, in the original, there was a broken archstone in the Nexus, which would have taken you to a sixth area that was cut from the game. There's actually a lot of data about this piece of cut content still in the original game files, so we know about some of the enemies that would have shown up there. But sadly, Bluepoint isn't adding it back for the remake. They've straight up said that the amount of areas you go to is exactly the same as the original. There are no new worlds. It makes sense that they want to be true to the original, warts and all, but it would have been cool to see all that stuff that was cut from the game that came back in some way, you know? Maybe it's future DLC? Who knows? Also worth pointing out, they haven't changed anything with the difficulty options. There are no difficulty options. Love it or hate it, that's their choice, and it seems like they're committing to keeping it original. Now down to number two, there are new items. This is something we've known about. The deluxe edition of the game includes some items not seen in the original game. And in interviews, the creative director has pretty much flat out said that there will be some new items in the game. One intriguing new item listed in the deluxe edition are these grains. They appear to be items that grant you certain resistances so they could potentially help out when dealing with specific challenges. They appear to be single use though, so they probably aren't that helpful. The other items listed, you know, stuff like the Red Eye Knight Armor and the Bulletarian Royalty Armor, sound like stuff that enemies in the game wear that now you have access to. Annoying that a lot of these Deluxe Edition items can only be obtained by buying the Deluxe Editions, but that's not all the new stuff that has been added to the game. Many original weapons will now have new animations, so two different swords may have two different completely different attack animations. The actual frames remain the same, which is very important to the gameplay. The attacks are all the same speed as they originally were, it's just some added detail to make everything feel a bit more unique. This doesn't mean they've incorporated the weapon arts from Dark Souls 3 or anything though. Don't get it twisted, they just made a lot of the weapons feel more distinct, even if the actual function of them is technically the same. Now down to number one, the game will actually be a little harder in some ways. The infamously hard game is actually gonna be harder, at least in some places. One of the biggest changes comes to how encumbrance and healing items work. In the original Demon Souls, you healed yourself with items called grass. In one of the more merciful decisions of the original, you could carry as much of this stuff as you wanted. Remember, in Demon Souls, everything in your inventory added to encumbrance, rather than just the armor you equipped, so you couldn't just carry everything with you in that game, in comparison to the later Dark Souls games, where you can just haul literally everything in your inventory with you if you want with no penalties. That system is the same in the remake, and in an added twist, they've made it so healing items have weight now, so you can't just carry as many as you want anymore. Better healing items weigh more, so you can't just grind and carry hundreds of these things anymore. The main reason this change was made is apparently to make the PvP game more satisfying. Players can't just drag out invasions for as long as they want anymore now that healing resources have been made somewhat more limited. That's a good change in our mind, but regardless, these are some significant changes. These are some things happening with the Demon Souls remake, at least just what we know from following the news so far. So if you learned something from this roundup and you appreciated it and learned something, clicking the like button does help us out. And we're really curious to hear what you guys think in the comments about this stuff. We know Demon Souls and Dark Souls fans are very specific, so we'd love to hear your nitpicks, comments, questions, and concerns down there. Consider subscribing if you like this video. We put out all kinds of videos every single day. So yeah, but thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.